Hello everyone, Genesis Writer here with episode number 11 of my gameplay review series, where I take gameplay submitted by you, the community, and give you tips and tricks on how you can perform better in online matchmaking. Today we have a very unique film submitted by both Sot Vengeance and Ubernick. It was a game of team doubles on the Ark, and it was Legendary Slayer VRs. Now, this film does require a little bit of prefacing. Essentially, both Ubernick and Sot Vengeance submitted their film POVs to me. Now POV stands for Point of View, and I'll be using that acronym throughout this video. Essentially, the main POV you're going to be seeing off the start here in the center of your screen is Ubernick's POV. Now, over to the top left-hand corner, right over here, surrounded by a dark blue border, you're going to be seeing Sot Vengeance's POV. Now, occasionally throughout this film, we will switch them. And when I switch them, there will be a light blue border surrounding Ubernick's POV in the top left-hand corner. But I'll give you a heads up on that long before it occurs. Now please keep in mind that because we're viewing both player POVs at the same time, there is really not an easy way without making this film way longer than it already is going to be to pop into third person theater mode and run around and show you various aspects of the film. We're only going to be viewing this film from the player's POVs and because of that we're going to be focusing more on the gameplay and technical movement slash aiming skill and player support rather than actual map coordination or weapon spawns on the map. I haven't played the Ark very much at all except in Dominion Light. It's a rather recent addition to Team Doubles. Another heads up I'd like to give you guys is that at the end of this film we'll go over a little things that they could improve on that I noticed throughout the film instead of pausing during the film a whole lot to talk about those things. I'll just sort of summarize them at the end of the film to save time. Another thing we'll go over is the elementary's little graph of um, where you fit in as a player into the three main categories. And it'll help you understand Ubernick, your player roles, and Sot Vengeance, your player roles in this film as well. So guys, this video took me a long time to make, but I hope you guys enjoy. So at the start of this game, we have Ubernick in our center POV and Sot Vengeance in the top left-hand corner. Now they're both going to slightly push this bridge and nade across trying to weaken the enemy players, but Sot Vengeance gets caught by a pretty wicked grenade and passes it back down. Ubernick, doing a pretty good flanking maneuver off to the left, passes over two frag grenades and the sniper rifle spawn, which is just below his radar in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. But neither player is really familiar with this map and where the weapons spawn, so let's just focus on the gameplay of what happens here. As Ubernick charges to the left here, you can see that Sot Vengeance in the top left is going to regain his shield and going to immediately push top middle. Now, Sot Vengeance, during this film you give up at least two eventual deaths because of some sort of push top middle onto this bridge. You don't want to ever be caught on this bridge unless you're trying to finish a kill or unless you have rockets pushing in on them. Regardless, Sot Vengeance does a pretty good job of pushing to his teammate to try to help him out even though his positioning and jumping top middle is incorrect. You can see here that Ubernick gets out the yard, trapping his teammate Sot Vengeance in this corner of the map where he just died. Now, Sot Vengeance, you should have tried to get out of this position by sprinting away, but your teammate Ubernick is going to come and flank the enemy from the right. A great flanking route, getting a really good angle on the enemy players as this enemy player does take you out with his second rocket. Now, there are only two rockets in this rocket launcher. So when this guy drops the rockets, there are no more rockets left, and there's not a rocket launcher to pick up. I'm sure that's something you didn't know, but seeing as both of you pull your assault rifles here, it's clear to me that you were not communicating about who was going to pick up the rocket launcher. If you had, you guys both wouldn't have been caught in the situation you're about to encounter yourselves in. Switching over and putting Sot Vengeance POV on the main screen, we're going to pause here for just a second Look at this DMR Sot Vengeance right next to this fusion coil. At this distance, you can see this enemy player off to the right. You really do want to be picking up weapons like this and using it long range. Um, it's going to be far more effective than a battle rifle unless you're just really good at aiming. And as you can see here, throwing grenades long range is really not going to be super effective at cleaning up kills. Not for weakening players, but for cleaning up kills. And you throw a ton of grenades right here. And this becomes really unfortunate because essentially what happens is the teammate that's full shields 
ends up charging you over the lift and you're not able to grenade him as he comes over the lift, which you could have easily done if you had grenades. Backing up a few seconds in the film and putting Ubernick back on the center POV, you can see how he dies by grenades right beside his teammate. He should have backed down. In fact, both Sop Vengeance and Ubernick should have backed out of that corner and got out of there as soon as possible. But we can see that Ubernick respawns on our screen here. And Ubernick, what I want to challenge you to do next time is to look to the right where your teammate is trapped in this corner. You spawn generally near him and you need to try to get over to him as quickly as possible so that he stays alive. If your teammate dies, you are just going to have to wait for him to respawn near you and then charge the enemy players. What you do off the spawn instead is run the opposite direction from him, flanking off to the left, which is a good flank, but you literally hang him out to dry and then charge the enemy players alone on the left. By the time you get to the enemy players, they have definitely regained their shields by that point, and your teammate ends up just dying off to the right when you might could have saved his life. Now the other part of this equation, which I did briefly mention, is that you're charging this enemy player on the left here without actually waiting for your teammate to respawn once you know that he's already died. Right here, your teammate respawns on the top left-hand corner very near you. As you can see by your radar in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, your teammate is on your radar, it's close to you. This guy that you're charging is choosing to stay off the radar and around the corner. And with Legendary Slayer's VR, that means he's going to try to assault rifle surprise you. You end up losing track of this enemy player, not waiting and baiting back, letting your teammate come in to help you and end up giving away a pretty embarrassing death here. Your teammate charges in, throwing two grenades that do absolutely nothing to this enemy player, charges in and does end up getting the headshot trade. But then you look at the guy who's actually shooting him for a cross snap and choose to go bottom middle and get trapped behind this rock, shooting this player from long range. Now, Uber Nick, you do die first from rather unfortunate circumstances, but Sop Vengeance, there's no really excuse for you pushing to the same place your teammate died and also getting killed. Uber Nick does respawn on the center screen here and is able to pick up a comeback kill on the right from this pretty decent flank, but Sop Vengeance, there was no reason to also try to stay long range here as Ubernick tries to pick up this kill on the right. Pulling up Sot Vengeance's POV on the main screen and backing up a few seconds in the film, we see that he dies bottom middle and then respawns beside his teammate who just got the comeback kill. Now Sot Vengeance, you charge over at the enemy players, laying down two pretty good grenades and getting this guy one shot, but you didn't communicate this really to your teammate. And Ubernick, this is really also your fault as you continue to remain long range back at the place where both of you died near the bridge. Now, I would say that Sop Vengeance's rush here is a little overzealous, but he was able to get a guy one shot and almost finish him off. If you had pushed onto the bridge or had been at an alternate angle, you would have been able to clean this guy up. But something I want to really, really hone in at Sop Vengeance's right here on your main screen is his radar. There are two players. As you come around this corner, you are facing one player who has full shields and one player who doesn't have full shields. The fact of the matter is, the enemy team has double your score, and you cannot afford to be trading at this sort of level of risk. When you go around this corner, it is likely that you will shoot the guy who has full shields instead of the guy who doesn't. It's easy to get confused between the two in split-second scenarios. And you just come around the corner and get absolutely blown out of the water by a grenade. Right here, you should have backed up and waited for your teammate Ubernick to finally clue in that he needed to come over and try to help you from an alternate angle. Now switching back to Ubernick's main POV on your screen as Soft Engines dies from the grenades in the top left hand corner, Ubernick is going to rashly charge where his teammate just died, hoping that this enemy player is weak and putting a few shots in him. Now I want to slow down the film here and then pause for a second as you trade shots with this enemy player. Ubernick, your teammate is behind you and to the left and you've put a few shots into this enemy player and then back down and that is good because you want to wait for your teammate to push up to you and get an alternate angle on this enemy player and kill him. Because there's only one enemy player on your radar, it's likely that he's alone, that the other enemy player is still across the map in the back of green. Sop Vengeance, take a look at your screen in the top left-hand corner. You're not focusing on the player your teammate is trying to kill. Instead, you're throwing long-range grenades at this guy who isn't even on your teammate's radar. I'm not sure what you think these grenades are going to do. You guys need to focus on the same enemy player. And Ubernick, you end up rashly jumping out here and dying. And this is completely unnecessary. You should have just waited for Sop Vengeance to push up and throw these grenades. Now Sop Vengeance realizes in the top left hand corner that his teammate has died. 
and decides to wait and pause here and wait for his teammate to respawn. Ubernick does respawn just to the right of the bridge, and he's going to finally get up on top of the bridge and actually push a little bit forward. Now right here, look to the right on the top, on the bottom right hand corner of your screen, just above the score, you can see where Vengeance is hiding behind this little ledge. But instead of actually focusing on the guy just in front of, front of Vengeance behind that little wall he's standing behind, Ubernick gets focused on the guy across the map, who isn't even really shooting any of them or on Sot Vengeance's radar. You can see right here in the bottom right hand corner of the screen, just to the right of the score, Ubernick, you have two or three seconds where this guy that your teammate is about to engage is in a clear visible sight range with you. Now I know you're not very familiar with this map, but seeing as you just died from this player and where you're grenading doesn't look like even remotely where you just died, you should have picked up on where your teammate was, who he was shooting at, and just make sure that you put these shots in this enemy guy. I guarantee you that this death that your teammate is about to encounter in the top left hand corner would not have happened. As it is, you both end up dying here from assault rifles. Ubernick, you're pushing rashly over, and yes, this enemy player does eat a headshot on your screen, which we'll take a little bit of a stronger look at later on in this film. You guys both respawn behind the bridge, and up until this point, you guys have given away four straight deaths. Now, once again, you guys lose track, or Ubernick specifically, loses track of this center player who's on rocket spawn. He pushes Rashly out onto the bridge, and this player is going to easily clean him up from rocket spawn. Ubernick, you've done this already once in the film where you kind of lost track of enemy players, but to do this twice in a row with the same guy in the same location is a little bit embarrassing, regardless of whether you know the map or not. Pushing out like this, rashly in a top middle open position without even waiting for your teammate to call out where enemy positions are is just a little bit presumptuous on your part. You need to slow it down and try to work with Sot Vengeance here. As Sot Vengeance pushes out to the right, you finally start shooting at the correct player. Unfortunately, Ubernick, yet again, you get distracted by this enemy player across the map. And I'm just going to give you a tip. You need to move to the right and help your teammate who's pushing on the right hand side of the map. You need to get out of this position once your shield to recharge. You don't need to stay on this bridge. There's no need to pot shot this long range with the battle rifle. And as you can see, now both enemy players are at green where Ubernick is looking. You can see that this enemy player dropped the rocket launcher which he just acquired for his teammate. And now the other enemy player is going to pick up that rocket launcher. And I really like what Sot Vengeance does here in the top left hand corner. I'm assuming Ubernick called this out to Sot Vengeance. And Sot Vengeance is going to push on these enemy players, but he's going to be very sneaky about it and start crouching, which means he's going to appear off the radar. So he's going to wait for Ubernick to push up once his shield is... And by the way, Ubernick, what, the run you just did right here, you should have been like 10 seconds ago, or exactly what you're doing right here. You're going to flank up behind these enemy players, and Ubernick is waiting behind this rock, waiting for Ubernick to get into position. Unfortunately, the enemy players notice sought vengeance but Ubernick is able to push in from behind and what is about to occur is extremely lucky as this enemy player jumps out with the rocket launcher he has one more rocket as you can clearly see this enemy player is going to fire this rocket but the explosion of this pulse grenade going back into its small form and then exploding it's going to actually divert the rocket off the floor and past Ubernick so that Ubernick can actually pick up this double kill. This play is huge and very, very lucky in this game. I want to pause here and mention something that a lot of players would not recognize. It is curious to me, especially when I was watching this film the first few times, how Sot Vengeance was the one of focus by the enemy players. As, you know, Ubernick comes up from behind them, neither one of them are focused on him. But Sot Vengeance was crouching behind the rock. And he'd crouched all the way up to that position. How did they know that he was behind this rock that you're seeing in the dead center of your screen right here? Well, guys, I want you to look past the rock a little bit on the left. And you can see that the sunlight from the map is shining on this wall off to the left, just below Sot Vengeance's screen on the top left-hand corner. Sot Vengeance, unfortunately, the enemy players knew you were crouching behind this rock because of your shadow. Your shadow was actually displaying past this rock onto the wall. And that's how they were able to tell that you were there. If you hadn't played this map before, there's no way you would have known that. 
it's very interesting going through and watching the film again because that's just one of the things you'll discover about a map and how to play it better. Now switching over to Sot Vengeance's main POV here as he comes to his team. The rocket launcher is not on the floor again, but you guys are both kind of still looking for it for some reason. Um, unfortunately, Sot Vengeance, as you can see here, goes kind of AFK, but he gets a really good perspective on these two double grenades that Ubernick gets hit with. The first grenade goes at Ubernick's feet, but the second grenade bounces a little farther along the wall, as you can see, and actually bounces on top of Ubernick's head as he drops down from this ledge, exploding above him. Now, this is just as Sot Vengeance comes back, throws a perfect grenade, and then the second grenade nading himself, somehow getting the headshot kill. He's going to turn to the right and look at the player that his teammate is going to be in shooting at, but hesitates a little too much, and then misses way too many shots on this player before finally getting the kill. But he's going to make up for it with some really solid shots in this second guy for the double kill as his teammate spawns across the map on bridge spawn. Now right here, Ubernick once again in the top left hand corner kind of gets trapped on the entrance to bridge, or bridge spawn as I would typically call it. And we can see here Sot Vengeance is going to try to pursue this player, but uh, overall Ubernick just is remaining way too passive here in the situation. He needs to push to his teammate a lot earlier than he does. And finally Ubernick in the top left hand corner actually does push over to his teammate. Um, who might have even died at this point if he hadn't hit that enemy player early on with a grenade. So, Ubernick's going to push him with a concussion rifle, push that guy back weak, but they're both going to get hit by some long-range fire and a grenade. They're both going to back up, and I really like this play here, how they really try to work together with this enemy player, finally flanking. Um, Sot Vengeance is going to actually push out here, get some solid shots into this guy, but accidentally going to be grenaded, and then he's going to be killed from the right. But switching over to Ubernick's POV, just as he gets this kill that Sot Vengeance helped him get, Ubernick is going to really duel this player well. Um, he's going to use his jump very well to try to kill this enemy player off and ends up connecting with the headshot, a very solid job on his part. He's going to push to the center of the map where his teammate just spawned and is pursuing an enemy player, picks up the needler, and gets this kill. Now, unfortunately, what occurs here is what occurs when a lot of Halo players get a kill with a weapon that you don't normally find that is easy to use. You suddenly have this temporary feeling like, oh, can I get another kill? Can I get another kill? And unfortunately, that's what happens to Ubernick in this situation. Ubernick, there's no need to try to needle this guy. It, you're never going to get the kill this way. And unfortunately, the way the situation plays out and is rather embarrassing, you guys both need to push in on this player really quickly and be much more aggressive. You cannot afford to remain long range. And the reason being is because your teammate Ubernick, Sot Vengeance in the left-hand corner, is going to be cleaned up long range from the other enemy player who has spawned. The, because you're pushing in and attacking the enemy player you're currently shooting at, the other enemy player will not spawn on him. He's going to spawn behind you guys. And unfortunately, Ubernick, your teammate, does end up being taken out. As it is, Ubernick, you try to push in on this enemy player. And once again, you seem to just lose all coherency or track of where this enemy player is. You know this enemy player is in this corner. And it, since he's appearing off the radar, he's going to try to kill you with his assault rifle which is exactly what happens and you end up being teabagged for your unawareness. Now you could have possibly avoided this death by jumping during this engagement or using your grenades for more close range battles and not long range Hail Marys. You push over here, a very good push off your respawn, taking out the enemy player, keeping your teammate alive, and then grabbing two fresh rockets. Now I want to point out many things about the scenario. You just killed off an enemy player, and your teammate is off to your right, as you can see on your radar, and by Sot Vengeance's POV in the top left-hand corner. Sot Vengeance has a really good view of this guy who's camping out in the corner here, and this enemy player also just used one of his grenades and doesn't have a power weapon. Because he is only one player, you know this and any other enemy player is going to be spawning somewhere behind you, so you do have kind of a little bit of urgency to push this guy and take him out, but you guys are both weak shields. What I would wait here is pull to the right a little bit behind this wall, wait a little bit for your teammate Vengeance to push up on the right and distract this enemy player, then push in with your rockets as your teammate runs away and take him out. Do not do long range pocket rockets as you do here. Neither of these rockets hit this enemy player and could have been used to regain the lead. It's crucial that you use the rockets to regain the lead. And once again, you push in way too close, throwing both your grenades, which do nothing, 
you make a little jump up here to this platform, which is a really good idea. I would have pursued this method of movement as it is, you just kind of fall into the enemy player's lap once again and unfortunately end up dying from the other player who respawns. Now taking a look at Sot Vengeance's POV here up in the top left hand corner. Vengeance, you are 7 kills behind and your teammate and one of the enemy players has just died. It is extremely important that you hang back and wait for your teammate to spawn on you so you can then push this enemy player. What ends up happening here is that you push forward only to unluckily have the enemy player who just died spawn on his teammate and then he actually grenades you which is really unfortunate as Ubernick pushes in here to try to help you out. Five minutes remaining in this film and six kills behind Ubernick charges in throws one grenade which does hit this second player tries to get that other player with another grenade but doesn't manage to jumps onto this platform gets two pulse grenades and blocks off this passageway forcing this player back Soft Vengeance pushing across the bridge, shooting the second player. Ubernake jumps up on top of this ledge and is shooting this second player as well, helping out his teammate Soft Vengeance, getting that player's shield weak. Then Ubernake finally uses this ledge to its correct purpose, jumping off and surprising this enemy player, melees him, backs up, and gets a nice headshot as his teammate Soft Vengeance cleans up that second kill. Spreading some dirty buttocks maneuvers to the enemy player, Ubernake pushes to his teammate, making sure he's okay. And what we're going to see Ubernick do here yet again is get concerned too much with the enemy player across the map. Peak shooting, long range. Now, Stop Vengeance does this a little bit too, but he's just looking at the player who's shooting his teammate while his teammate regains his shield. There's no need to peek there, Ubernick. You are one shot. We're going to switch over to Stop Vengeance as Stop Vengeance pushes on the right, and Ubernick stays behind, not supporting his teammate as much. Stop Vengeance catches this player offline, kills him with a dirty pulse grenade but then gets hit slightly by his own pulse grenade as he jumps out and tries to shoot this second player. There are two things to note. Number one, Sot Vengeance, you could have definitely taken out this second player you were jumping towards because you have the first shot. However, you did run into your own pulse grenade, and that is actually the reason why you lose the battle. The second reason you lose this battle is because Ubernick is still on the side of the map that you left him on. Ubernick, you really have to be charging with your teammate over to where he is on the side of the map and not get pinned in a specific corner via long range battle. Once again, Ubernick continues to hang around very passively in the side yellow corner while Sot Vengeance respawns, pushes to the right, and catches the enemy player off guard. Ubernick in the top left spots an enemy player and decides to keep him back in the side corner. Another enemy player respawns near that guy, and Ubernick in the top left hand corner is going to get some solid shots into them, which are then cleaned up by Sot Vengeance, who sees this player pick up the sniper rifle behind this pillar in your center screen and cleans him up with a headshot. Now switching over to Ubernick's uh, POV, we're actually going to look at what happened a few seconds ago. As soon as he gets the assist, Ubernick is going to sprint at this player who has the assault rifle around the corner and to the left. Now we've already ran into a situation like this before, where an enemy player was left alone and they knew the location of that enemy player but only one person pushed in at a time, and both of them ended up dying. A similar situation occurs here, where Ubernick charges this guy alone and doesn't wait for his teammate. Instead, his teammate, saw Vengeance in the top left, sprints for the sniper rifle, which the enemy player dropped in the center of the map near the pillar under the bridge. Saw Vengeance, you needed to go to your teammate in the situation and help him clean up this enemy player. But Ubernick, you needed to try to stay alive longer than you did here. You end up charging out, as you can see here, trying to kill this player somehow, and your teammate ends up picking the sniper rifle and having to back down behind this rock near the center of the map. Now, Ubernick, you just charged this enemy player flat out on the left, leaving your teammate to the devices of this other enemy player. Luckily, your teammate knows to jump when encountering the assault rifle and gives the enemy player a nasty four shot. You, on the other hand, do not, and you get up being cleaned up by the same player once again using the assault rifle. I really like this play that Sot Vengeance does with the sniper rifle, pushing off to the right here and flanking and looking towards the center as Ubernick spots this guy in the center of the map, calls it out, and Sot Vengeance gets the good snipe. Now, Ubernick, I really want to point out something. In the very dead center of your screen, just above the yellow lights and to the left of the plus five assist words, you can see the second enemy player in the corner of the map. And Ubernick, you actually lose track of this player yet again. By the time you push over there, your teammate has used up most of his sniper rifle ammo and is not able to support you with that weapon. 
but you should realize that the second enemy player is already going to spawn on this guy in the corner. And so when you push over right here, as you're going to end up doing as your teammate is across the bridge, just to the right, this guy you see on the right-hand side of your screen, that is the second guy who spawned. This guy who has the assault rifle still camping in the corner right around to your left, but you push out shooting the guy that you saw instead of realizing that this guy's camping behind you with the assault rifle. But you do end up still getting the kill, which is a good job on your part. Now the next few plays are pretty subtle, so I'm going to try to point them out as they occur. Ubernick and Sot Vengeance both ship on top of the bridge, and Sot Vengeance stays behind on the bridge, anchoring a center position. As soon as Sot Vengeance gets shot, he's going to back down, but watch Ubernick push in on the right side here, really charge the enemy players. Now this is a really, really lucky play, and it could have given away or earned the game, depending on how you look at it. But with real star here is Sot Vengeance pushing in at the perfect moment to take advantage of the second enemy player's distraction of his teammate dying with rockets. Vengeance gets a killing spree out of this, and it's very important to realize that Vengeance does this a second time right after this, as they take out the enemy players a second time in a row directly after this using this exact same strategy, baiting towards Vengeance in the center of the map near the sniper spawn. Now, Ubernick is going to kind of peel off to the right here, and he's going to end up taking down a player with some really good shots. Again, another Pucket Rocket, very, very bad play on that part, but ends up making up for it with some really, really solid shots on this enemy player, charging out a little bit when he's weak and getting solid shots. But right here, pause and look on Ubernick's main screen just above his radar on the bottom left-hand corner. And notice this second enemy player looking at him as his one shot and has no shields. But look at the top left hand corner where Sot Vengeance is. Pushing up at the perfect opportunity, jumping up, on, up onto the bridge, taking advantage of his teammate's distraction to get this easy second kill. Sot Vengeance still staying alive around that center pillar where Sniper spawns. They've gotten four kills in a row without dying. Ubernick pushes out to the right here on your center main screen. They both spot a player at the same time and melt that player. Really good job on Ubernick's part, staying alive from that grenade. And Sot Vengeance now getting pushed by two players in the center of the screen. Somehow stays alive while Ubernick on your main screen pushes around to the right and flanks these two players. Killing one, he gets the second player one shot, forcing him into the fusion coil corner. And Sot Vengeance is going to clean up that kill for seven kills in a row, giving up no deaths. Finding the film a few seconds and switching over to Sot Vengeance's POV as he picks up the 29th kill. It's 45 seconds remaining, 29 to 26, and we're going to pause for a second right before Sot Vengeance jumps onto top middle bridge. Vengeance, it is extremely important to understand that while you have gotten away with some serious crud on this very position, it hasn't necessarily been on top of the bridge the entire time. There was a moment really early on in the film where you also gave away some kind of dumb exposed deaths on top of the bridge. Right here is no exception as you get absolutely melted by these enemy players who are obviously going to be looking towards where you've been this entire time. Ubernick actually barely gets away and you end up respawning here on the right, but Ubernick doesn't hold his position. You guys don't end up working together here. What you should have done with this player who's in front of you is curve off to the right and call it to your teammate this guy was near you and remain passive. Don't necessarily charge this enemy player. You're going to win. You can burn down the timer. You don't have to aggressively engage this player. You're two kills ahead. Instead, both of you end up aggressively trying to get the last kill and there's no need to do that. You need to just stay together and work together and wait for them to come to you. As it is, you luckily respawn in Fusion Coil Corner, get this guy one shot, but more importantly, switch targets to the guy your teammate was shooting and end up finishing him off. Really good job here, Sot Vengeance, noticing that for the final kill, but you guys could have remained more passive to get that final kill because you had the clock on your side. By going over some after game thoughts, Sot Vengeance, it really seems like you have a significant problem with throwing grenades. Specifically the tendency to throw grenades long range at targets where you really don't know exactly where you are or where your grenades are going to hit. These grenades that you're throwing right now on the screen really aren't going to hit anybody. And they're not going to do any good. You need to conserve your grenades for a time when they're actually useful. 
Long range grenades like this really, really do not help your team. Now, I'd like to point out that right here, you get a hit marker with this first grenade you threw, but because you're not close to that first grenade you threw, you're never going to be able to clean up that kill, once again proving that long range grenades are not really necessary in these circumstances. You could have just pulled out your BR here and focused on making your shot more accurate so you wouldn't have died. Now right here at the beginning of the film, you throw four grenades in a row that do absolutely nothing to this enemy player. And grenades like this you're about to throw under this bridge, while they are helpful to deter, um, you don't need to be throwing both of your grenades. Um, there's only one the grenade necessary to do that because you just threw both of them in the exact same location. Right here, you hit this wall with this grenade, and then later on in the film, you end up doing the exact same thing, hitting the exact same wall, missing the player completely. You need to make sure you're watching where your grenades go so that you can correct them later on. Now, you use pulse grenades kind of rashly here, both of them. You need to be on top of players when you're using them, not really far away from players when you use your pulse grenades. Um, this example right here, you again throw a really long range grenade that doesn't really do you any good and um, then you back down and throw some more long range grenades and it, they just really aren't going to do your teammate any good. Or you any good that matter. Now you also have a problem with grenading yourself. Now this grenade doesn't grenade yourself right there but it almost does. You almost grenade yourself here with this pulse and then you legitimately end up grenading yourself uh, right here, you throw a perfect grenade at this enemy player's feet as he comes up to you. That's an example of the grenade you want to throw, but the second grenade grenades yourself and you luckily get the kill here. That first grenade is what you want to see. Um, and this grenade, you end up perfectly pulsing this guy, and then you run into your own pulse grenade that explodes, chipping your shields down and allowing this enemy player to kill you. This is really not something uh, we want to be seeing um, in gameplay with your pulse grenades. Now. Right here, your hesitancy with your grenade pushes is weird. You just threw like three grenades at this guy. You need to push in and try to get this kill now, okay? You don't need to try to wait for hit markers to pop up on your screen. I'm right here, your teammate dies and you throw two grenades. You needed to wait and use these grenades later as neither of these grenades ends up hitting these enemy players, even though the enemy player is right around the corner from you. Now, I like this deterrent grenade to force this player to the left. You know where this player is going to go, throw a perfect grenade, and get this 29th kill. A really good job with that grenade, okay? And then moving on, we have some other pretty decent grenades here. This is a great grenade banked off wall, but don't throw the second grenade. You could have easily caught this guy and cleaned him up for the headshot. Your first grenade did plenty of damage. The same thing here, your first grenade hit this guy, and then you end up like trying to throw a second grenade, but moving on, um, you throw this first grenade, get, you know, and then you throw the second grenade in the exact same spot. This guy's gonna be moving far, far away from this place. He's not going to end up being in the same location. You get the first grenade throw, and then you throw the second grenade before you even know whether the first grenade hit him or not. Um, right here, you get the first grenade throw perfectly, and you throw the second grenade at the same place, assuming that he's going to be there. You, you need to definitely save your second grenade for a more um, apt situation. You end up just being killed here because you didn't push up fast enough on this enemy player who was obviously very weak. Um, you end up throwing a, a first grenade there, and then you pop off this guy, but that first grenade you threw is not going to do much good as it doesn't hit that enemy player. Now, this is a great example of a grenade right here. You get make this guy back down a bridge, you predict where he's going to go, and you get hit the player one shot, and your teammate cleans him up for the assist. Really nice job there. These are the situations where you need to be using your grenade when players are pushing you on your radar and you know where they're going to be. Like this first and second kill. Overall, you just need to work in your grenades. Wait till players are charging you or you know where they are before you throw your grenades. Save your grenades for those good throws. Now some final thoughts to Ubernick, because I really wasn't able to hone on this stuff during the gameplay. Ubernick, you are using a little bit of a high sensitivity. And I'm not saying extremely high, but what I'd recommend doing is turning it down by one. Just lower your sensitivity by one and see how it affects your shot because some of your shots just are really wobbly. Sometimes your shot is really on and then sometimes it is really off. And at these kind of long, mid to long range kills, it's just, you find it so, somehow really difficult to kind of keep on the enemy player for whatever reason. Don't get me wrong, you have some really good shots um, at certain parts in the film, but it just seems to me that it would benefit you. It, it's your decision, but um, that is what I'd recommend. Um, I actually really do want to call you out um, for doing a good job, though, when you're pushing 
um, the rocket carrier. I really like um, how your shots are. With this first engagement, they are still kind of wobbly, showing off what I was saying about your sensitivity, but um, you have several moments in the film that are really good, which we won't go into here, which um, you do perform correctly. One of the better ones here, where you just dodge this enemy player's rocket and just really give him a nice four or five shot there. Another issue I wanted to point out to you was that you tend to lose track of players and literally you're letting this player get into your mind, this guy who has the assault rifle. The same guy kills you with the assault rifle like four times during this game in almost the exact same way. You really need to not let players like this get into your head. Now the kill you're about to see, or the death you're about to see here, we're going to go over at the very end of the film to wrap things up. But essentially, you don't need to be charging this guy. You need to be with your teammate charging this guy. And I've already mentioned that during the film, so I won't beat it to a pulp here again but you really really have to be paying attention to where this guy is and specifically you need to be jumping while you're engaging him with his assault rifle um, this guy wouldn't be able to do almost anything to you um, but just some of your deaths are so repetitive in this fashion as you can see jumping off on the yellow this is like the th second or third time we've seen you pull this exact same maneuver and you just end up eventually dying for doing so don't get frustrated with players like this Take them out with your teammate. Don't charge in alone and just get destroyed like this. It's really important not to let the enemy players get into your head. Once again, jumping up on yellow, you're losing track of this enemy player. As you did see him from long range before this, he's going to assault rifle you from behind and just clean you up right here. Players like this are pretty easily predictable, and it's pretty easy to know where you're going to be shot from. But now let's move on to the elementary's graph. Switching over to the elementary's player role graphs, I want to go over this graph with Ubernick and Sop Vengeance so that they can see kind of where they fit in. If you guys are unfamiliar with this graph, please go to Delementary's video. There's an annotation in the top right hand corner and a link in the description to get a full description on this graph and how the various player roles are affected by the core traits blue intelligence, red aggressive, and green awareness. Starting with Ubernick, I want to point out that he really seems to be an objective-minded player, and here's the main reason for that. Ubernick, when you are facing people long range, and specifically when you are then closing the gap on those players without a flank, in other words, you're just charging straight at them, your awareness level at that point really seems to suffer, okay? And I'm not saying you have an insanely high intelligence either, but specifically on this map, it was harder for me to tell this because the blue intelligence trait is also judged by how well you know weapon spawns and um, the map in general. But I feel like you use this map better because you had better flanking routes on the side. Your intelligence, when you started to flank, specifically when you guys got those like seven kills in a row, more towards the end of the game, was really phenomenal. I really like how you flank the rocket launcher carrier many times. And just the way in which you approach some of those situations is pretty brilliant. But when you get kind of stuck in a corner, um, it really seems like you don't know what to do. And this is where, if your awareness levels were higher, you would know where the enemy players are, and you'd know where you could escape to. As it is, um, you seem to know how to stay alive and when to push aggressively in certain situations. But even so, your aggressiveness is kind of low. So I'd put you a little higher on the objective and more towards the blue intelligence than I would towards the red of aggressive. What you need to try to improve on is knowing where enemy players are across the map, communicating with your teammate more, and being more aggressive when your teammate is pushing in on enemy players. Likewise, sir, for Sot Vengeance, I would put Sot Vengeance more um, as an aware player. He seems to be very aware of where the enemy players are and also how to shoot them from range. He also kind of gets stuck in some corners every once in a while, and he is also aggressive in certain scenarios, but it's not aggressive in a good way. And this is why I can't really put him too much into the red aggressive, because most of his aggressive pushes don't end very well, as for Ubernick, who does the complete opposite. Now, um, Sot Vengeance, with your intelligence levels um, inside the game, it really seems like you need to use angles more and use the map more to your advantage. It seems like you are waiting for your teammate or waiting for yourself to get into a good position. Put yourself into those good positions. Um, be aggressive and intelligent by pushing into positions that will get you into a better place and then use your really good awareness to pick out where the enemy players are and shoot them from angles that they're not expecting you. As it is, I hope these thoughts make sense. I know that I'm a little bit messy with my 
um, construction of thoughts around this graph. But that, guys, that's the, really the best I can do. I want to wrap up this film, though, with really honing in on two moments of lag that Ubernick experienced doing, during this game and just really show you guys how much lag actually affects matchmaking games. All right, so during this film, I noticed that Ubernick experienced two catastrophic examples of lag, but because I wasn't able to be in third person, wasn't able to really show you guys, but I decided to include them at the end here because they really, really do prove how much you need to be using a wired connection to your Xbox and not a wireless connection. Now, it is possible that Ubernick could be using a wired connection. I don't really know, but my guess is that either someone was on his internet watching Netflix or videos while this game was occurring, or he's using a wireless internet connection. Why? Let me show you. Okay, so he jumps out, and let's pause right here, okay? Let's just pause right here and watch this really, really slowly. In fact, I'm just gonna back up here. Okay, so these shots occur. Ubernick now has no shields, okay? His shields just pop. And I want you guys to watch this, okay? Watch as Ubernick's head goes below this little ledge. And boom, you can't see his head anymore, okay? He's not there, all right? This guy could not have killed him, all right? There's no way he could he could have killed him unless lag occurs like this. Okay? So I just want you to look at this real, real soon here, okay? This guy shoots literally through the floor to kill Ubernick. Now, the, what's actually happening here is that Ubernick, his player positioning in comparison to the enemy player's positioning is lagging behind by about a second or two. So this player actually didn't shoot him through the floor. He actually got the legit... Like, if this guy had saved his film and we were watching it from his perspective, he would have legitimately shot him out of the air. But because Ubernick is lagging, he perfectly predicted this drop and shouldn't have died here, but he did because he was lagging. Now let's move on to the second example. Actually, highly ironically, uh, this second moment of lag takes place directly after the death I just showed you. Ubernick is going to spot this guy in green corner, throw a few grenades, and then we're going to push over with him um, to this player. Now, I want to zoom forward a little bit. So we got this player one shot. Okay, This guy has no shield. And this first shot that Ubernick fires, the one, two, three, that hits this guy's shoulder. It's not a headshot, okay? which is factoring into the stuff I said about his sensitivity. But moving on, okay, this is just completely silly, and I'm sorry for the blurriness effect, um, but this is just completely silly. This guy goes to the right, and Ubernick clearly shoots this guy in the head with this headshot. And yes, Ubernick is about to die, but even then, on top of that, his second shot also hits this guy in the head, all right? It's just ridiculous. Like, I don't, I, if there's not a better example of lag than that, I really don't know, okay? Because the Ubernick definitely should have at least traded with this guy. And ooh, scary foot! Oh my gosh! <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this film. I'm really sorry it was this long, but if you guys want to submit your own gameplay to me, click on the annotation in the top left-hand corner, and it'll take you to a video that will describe how you submit your gameplay to me. Now, as it is, I spent a humongous amount of time on this video, and so I'm not sure how many films I'll be reviewing before the Destiny beta comes out, before Destiny comes out, the Master Chief Collection, and things of that nature. Feel free to submit your films, though, and I'll see what I can do. But thank you, Ubernick and Salt Visions, for submitting your film. Guys, please leave a like and subscribe for more Destiny, Halo, Master Chief Collection, Halo 5 content, and I'll see you guys in the next capture or whatever I end up recording. Peace.